ditch close by the tame side. You will do it. I had told them over and over again. They lack no direction. Be gone and come when you are called. Oh, look, here comes little Robin. How now, my eyes, musket? What news with you? My master, Sir John, is coming at your back door, Mr. Sport, and request your company. <gasps> Little Jacqueline, have you been true to us? I, I'll be sworn. My master knows not of my being here, and hath threatened to put me into everlasting liberty if I tell you of it, for he swears he'll turn me away. Thou art a good boy. This secrecy of thine shall be a tailor to thee and make thee a new doublet and hose. I'll go hide thee. Do so. Go tell thy master I am alone. Mr. Page, remember you your cue. I warn thee, if I do not act, it hits me. We'll use this unwholesome humidity. This gross, watery pumpkin will teach him to know turtles from jays. <laughs> Have I caught thee, my heavenly jewel? Why now, let me die, for I have lived long enough. This is the period of my ambition. Oh, this blessed hour. Sir John. Mistress Ford, I cannot cog. I cannot prate, Mistress Ford. Now shall I sin in my wish. I would thy husband were dead. Woo! I'll speak it before the best lord. I would make thee my lady. I, your lady, Sir John, alas! I should make a pitiful lady. Let the court of France show me such another. I see how thine eye would emulate the diamond, and thou hast the right arched beauty of the brow that becomes the ship tire, the tire valiant, or any tire of Venetian admittance. Oh, a plain kerchief, Sir John, my brow becomes nothing else, nor that well neither. Thou art a tire, aunt, uh -huh. to say so. Thou wouldst make an absolute courtier. And the firm fixture of thy foot would give an excellent motion to thy gait in a semicircled farthingale. Oh. I see what thou wert if fortune thy foe were not nature thy friend. Come, thou canst not hide it. Oh, believe me, there's no such thing in me. What made me love thee? Let that persuade thee there's something extraordinary in thee. I cannot say. Thou art this and thou art that, like a many of these lisping hawthorn buds <laughs> that come like women in men's apparel and smell like bucklers bury in simple time. I cannot, but I love thee, none but thee, and thou deservest it. Oh, do not betray me, sir. <laughs> I fear you love Mistress Bates. Oh, thou mightst as well say to walk by the counter gate, which is as hateful to me as the reek of a lime kill. Oh, oh, well, heaven knows how I love you, <laughs> and one day you shall find it. Keep in that mind, I'll deserve it. Oh, nay, I must tell you so you <laughs> do, or else I could not be in that mind. <laughs> 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 Sweating and blowing and looking wildly, uh, and we need to speak with you presently. I'll instruct me behind the arras. She oh. shall not see me. Pray you do so. She's a very tattling woman. Oh. What's the matter? How now? Oh, Mistress Ford, what have you done? You are shaved. You are overthrown. You are undone forever. Oh. What's the matter, good Mistress Page? Oh, well a day, Mistress Ford, having such an honest man for your husband to give him such cause of suspicion. What cause of suspicion? What cause of suspicion? Out upon you, how I am mistook in you! Oh, why, alas, what's the matter? Oh, woman, your husband's coming uh -huh. hither. 
upon him. Oh, as if it were going to washing or is it whiting time? Send him by your two men to fetch it mend. Oh, what shall I do? He's too big to go oh. in there. Oh, let me see it. Creep in here. I'll never. Oh, call your master, boy. Call your men, Mrs. Ford. You dissembling knight. Watch out! Run! Oh, John! No. Go take up the clothes here. It shall appear. Just, I have dreamed tonight. I will tell you my dream. Here, here, here are my keys. Ascend my chambers. Search, seek, find out. I'll warrant will unkennel the fox. Here, I'll stop this way first. So now, I can't. Master Ford, be content. You wrong yourself too much. Uh, uh, true, Master Page. Up, uh, gentlemen, you shall see sport to none. Follow me, gentlemen. Tis fantastical humors and jealousies, eh? By God, he's not that fashion of France. It is not jealous in France. <laughs> Nay, follow him, gentlemen. See the issue of his search. Oh. Is there not a double excellency in this? I know not which pleases me better. That my husband is deceived, or Sir John. What a taking was he in when your husband asked who was in the basket? <laughs> I'm half a Brady Will of need of washing, so throwing him into the river will do him a benefit. Hang him, dishonest rascal. I wish all of the same strain were in the same distress. I think my husband hath some special suspicion of Falstaff's being here. I never saw him so gross in his jealousy until now. We will lay a plot to try that, and we will yet have more tricks with Falstaff. His dissolute disease will scarce obey this medicine. Shall we send that foolish carrion mistress quickly to him and excuse his throwing into the river and give him another hope to betray him another punishment? We will do it. Let him be sent for tomorrow, 8 o'clock, to have amends. Oh. Oh. Well. I cannot find him. Maybe oh. the knave bragged of that when she could not compass. Heard you that? You use me well, Master Ford, do you not? I, I, I do so. Heaven, make you better than your thought. Amen. You do yourself mighty wrong, Master Ford. I, 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 I must bear it. There is anybody in the house, and in the chambers, and in the coffers, and in the presses, and forgive me on the day of judgment. Oh. No, I do. There is no body. Ah. Fine, fine, Master Ford. Are you not ashamed? What spirit, what devil suggests this imagination? I would not have your distemper for all the wealth in Windsor Castle. Tis my fault, Master Page. I suffer for it. You suffer for bad conscience. Your wife is as honest a woman as I would desire among 5,502. By your. Uh, I see this an honest woman. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I promised you a dinner. Come, come, walk in the park. I pray you, pardon me. I will hereafter make known to you why I have done this. Uh, come, wife. Come, Mistress Page. I pray you, uh, pardon me. Pray heartily pardon me. Well, let's follow him in, gentlemen, but trust me, we'll mock him. 
I do invite you to my house tomorrow morning for breakfast, after which we'll go a birding. I have a fine hawk for the bush. Shall it be so? Anything. I shall make one if there is two in the company. By God, if there be one or two, I shall make it a turn. Shall we go, Master Phoenix? I pray you remember tomorrow and the lousy need my most. By God, on my heart. Allows me to have a gibs and a mockery. Pray you just follow. See, I cannot get thy father's love, therefore no more turn me to him, sweet man. Alas, how then? Why, thou must be thyself. He doth object that I am too great of birth, and that my state being walled with my expense, I seek to heal it only by his wealth. Besides these other bars he lays before me, my riots past, my wild society, and says tis a thing impossible that I should love thee but as a property. Maybe he tells you true. No, heaven so speed me in my time to come. Albeit, I will confess thy father's wealth was the first motive that I wound thee, yet wound thee. I found thee of greater wealth than stamps in gold or sums in sealed bags, and to the very riches of thyself that now I know. Gentle Master Fenton, yet seek my father's love, still seek it, sir. If opportunity and humble suit cannot obtain it, why then, hark you hither. Talk, Mr. Strictly, my kingdom that shall speak for itself. Oh, I'll make chapter both and it slid. Tis but venturing. She's coming to her cousin. Oh, boy, thou hadst a, a father. Uh, I had a father, Mistress Anne. My, my oh. uncle can tell you the good jests of him. Pray you, uncle, tell Mistress Anne the jest, how my father stole two geese out of a pen. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, Mistress Anne. My cousin loves you. Uh, uh, I that I do, as I love any woman in Gloucestershire. Uh, he will treat thee like a gentlewoman. Oh, I that I will, uh, come cut and long tail uh, under the degree of a squire. He will make me a hundred and fifty pounds jointure. Good Master Shallow, let him woo for himself. Mary, I thank thee. I thank thee for such sweet comfort. She calls for you, cuz. <laughs> I'll leave you two. Uh, now, Master Slender. Uh, 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 now, good Mistress Anne. What is your will? Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, my <laughs> will? Uh, it's hardly your That's will. That's a pretty jest indeed. Uh, 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 your will? Oh. My will. I ne'er made my will yet. I thank heaven. I am not such a sickly creature. I give heaven praise. I mean, Master Slender, what would you with me? Oh, truly, for mine own part, I would little or nothing with you. Your father and my uncle have made motions, if it be my luck. So, if not, happy man be his dull. They can tell you how things go better than I can. You can ask your father. Here he comes. Oh. Master Slender. Love you, daughter Anne. How now?
put this master vent in here. You wrong me, sir. Dust is still haunt my house. I told you, sir, my daughter is disposed of. Hey, master, be not impatient. Master Patrick is not my daughter. She is no mad for you. Sir, will you hear me? No, I will not. Come, shadow. Come. Son, surrender. <laughs> Knowing my mind, you wrong me. Speak to Mistress Page. Good Mistress Page, for that I love your daughter in such a righteous fashion as I do, perforce against all checks, rebukes, and manners. I must advance the colors of my love and not retire. Let me have thy good will. Good mother. Do not marry me to your fool. I mean it not. I seek you a better husband. That's my master. Hey, master, not fair. Uh, alas, I'd rather be set quick in the earth and bold to death with turnips. Oh, come, trouble not yourself. Good master Fenton, I will be not your friend nor your enemy. My daughter will I question how she loves you, and as I find her, so am I affected. Until then, farewell, sir. She must needs go in. Her father will be angry. Farewell, Henry. Farewell. <coughs> this is my doing. Nay, said I, will you cast away your child on a fool and a physician? Look on, Master Fenton. <laughs> this is my doing. <laughs> I thank thee and I pray thee, once tonight, give my sweet man this ring. Oh. There's for thy pain. <laughs> Heaven send me good fortune. <laughs> oh, a kind heart he had. A woman would run through fire and water for such a kind heart. And yet, I would Mistress Anne was had by my master, or by Master Splendor, <laughs> or in sooth by Master Fenton. <laughs> oh, I'll do what I can for them all three, for so I have promised as I'll be as good as my word but speciously for Master Fenton. <laughs> oh, now I must have another errand to Sir John Falstaff for my two mistresses. What a beast I am to swag it. Simple of itself, I'll know pull it sperm in my brewage. 
How now? Mary, sir, I come to you from Mistress Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress Ford, I have had Ford enough. I was thrown into the Ford. I have my belly full of Ford. Oh, good heart, that was not her fault. She does so take on with her men. They mistook their erection. So did I mine. <laughs> To build upon a foolish oh. woman's promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, she laments, sir, for it that it would yearn your heart to see it. <coughs> oh, she would that you would come to the house between eight and nine. Her husband goes a burden. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, she'll make amends, I warrant you. I will visit her, tell her so, <laughs> and bid her think what a man is. Let her consider his frailty and then judge of my merit. <laughs> I will tell her. <laughs> Do so between uh, nine and 10, sayest thou? Eight and nine, sir. Well, be gone, <laughs> I will not miss her. <laughs> <laughs> I marvel I hear not of Master Brooke. He sent me word to stay within. I like his money well. Oh, here he comes. <coughs> oh, bless you, sir. Uh, now, Master Brook, you come to know what hath passed between me and Ford's wife. That, indeed, Sir John, is my business. Master Brook, I will not lie to you. I was at her house the hour she appointed me. And sped you, sir? Very ill-favoredly, Master Brook. How so, <coughs> sir? Did she uh, change her determination? No, Master Brook, but the peaking corn. Not so her husband, Master Brook. Dwelling in a continual larum of jealousy comes me in the instant of our encounter after we had kissed, embraced, <laughs> protested, and as it were, um, spoke the prologue of our comedy, and at his heels a rabble of his companions did their provoked and instigated by his distemper and forsooth to search his house for his wife's love. What? While you were there? While I was there. And did he search for you and could not find you? Nay, you shall hear, Master Brooke. Well, in comes one Mistress Page, gives intelligence of Ford's approach, and in her invention and Ford's wife's distraction, they conveyed me into a buck basket. A buck basket? Yes, a buck basket. Rammed me in with foul shirts and smocks, greasy napkins of their Master Brooke, was the rankest compound of villainous smell that ever offended nostril. <coughs> oh, and how long lay you there? <coughs> Nay, you shall hear, Master Brooke, what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. Being crammed in the basket, a couple of Ford's knaves, his hinds, were called forth by their mistress to carry me in the name of Foul clothes to Datchet Lane. They dragged me in the basket, met the jealous knave, their master, in the door, who asked them once or twice what they had in the basket. I quaked with fear lest the lunatic knave should have searched it, but fate ordaining he should be a cuckold, held his hand. Well, on went he for a search, and away went I for foul clothes. But mark the sequel, Master Brook. I suffered the pangs of three several deaths. First, an intolerable fright to be detected with a jealous, rotten, castrated male leader of a flock of sheep. Uh, then, to be compassed like a good Bilbo in the circumference of a pack, heel to point, heel to head, and last, to be stopped in like a strong distillation with sinking clothes that fretted in their own grease. Think of that, a man of my kidney. Think of that, that I'm as subject to heat as butter. A man of continual dissolution and thought. It was a miracle to escape suffocation. And in the height of this great bath, when I was more than half stewed in grease like a Dutch dish, to be thrown in the tubs and cooled, glowing hot in that surge, like a horseshoe. <laughs> think of that, hissing hot. Think of that, 
Master Brook. Brook. Oh, oh in, in good sadness, sir. I am sorry that for my sake you have suffered all this. Uh, my uh. suit then is desperate. You'll pursue her no more. Master Brook, I will be thrown into Etna as I have been thrown into Thames ere I will leave her thus. Her husband is this morning gone and burning. I have received from her another embassy of invitation. Twixt eight and nine is the hour, Master Brook. Uh, Tis past <laughs> eight already, sir. Is it? I will then address me to my uh, <clears throat> appointment. Come to me at your convenient leisure, and you shall know how I speed, and the conclusion shall be crowned with your uh, enjoying her. <laughs> you shall have a Master Brook. Master Brook, you shall cuckold Ford. <laughs> Is this a vision? Is this a dream? Do I sleep? Oh. Awake, Master Ford, awake! There's a hole made in your best coat, Master Ford. This, tis to be married. This, tis to have linen and buck baskets. Well, I will proclaim myself what I am. I will now take the lecher. He is at my house. He cannot escape me, tis impossible he should. He cannot creep into a halfpenny purse, nor into a pepper box, but Lest the devil that guides him should aid him, I will search impossible places. If I have horns to make one mad, let the proverb go with me. I'll be horn mad. <laughs> Well, what is your accusative case? Accusativo hing. I pray you remember, child. Accusativo hing hog hog. Hang hog is Latin for bacon, I warrant. Leave your troubles, <laughs> woman. What is the vocative case, oh. William? Oh, vocativo, oh. Remember, William, vocative is caret. <laughs> no, woman! What is your genitive case plural, William? Genitive case? Aye. Genitive. Horum, harum, horum. Vengeance on Ginny's case! <laughs> Why on her never name her child if she be a whore? Oh, for shame! <laughs> you do ill to teach a child such words. He teaches him to hate, to drink, and to have, to wait, <laughs> which they'll do soon enough of themselves, and to call horum. Woman, 
of the lunatic, have thy no understanding of thy cases and thy numbers of thy gentiles. No, no, thou art as foolish a Christian creatures as I would desire for thee. I pray you, peace, peace. Show me now, William.
night again. I hope not. I would have leave fair so much less. Ah, but if it proved true, Master Page, have you any way then to unfool me again? Set down the basket, villain. Somebody call my wife. Basket. Oh, you panderly rascals! There is a knot, a gag, a conspiracy against me. What? Wife, I say! Come, come forth! Behold what honest clothes you sent forth to bleach you. This passes, Master Ford. You are not to go loose any longer. You must be pinioned. Tis jealousy, Master Ford. Tis mad as a mad dog. Oh. Indeed, Master Ford, this is not well. In Indeed. Oh, so say I too, sir. Oh, come hither, Mistress Ford. A Mistress Ford, the honest woman, the modest wife, the virtuous creature that hath the jealous fool to her husband. I suspect without cause, Mistress, do I? Heaven be my witness, you do, if you suspect me in any dishonesty. Well said. Brazen face. <laughs> no, come forth, sirrah. This passes. Oh. Are you not ashamed? Let the clothes alone. I shall find you a nerve. Come away, Master Ford. Will you take up your wife's clothes? Empty the basket, I say. Why, man? Why? Master Page, as I am a man, there was one conveyed out of my house yesterday in this basket. Why should he not be there again? In my house, I am sure he is. My intelligence is true. My jealousy is reasonable. Uh, pluck me out all the linen. If there be a man there, he will die a flea's death. Hear no man. By my fidelity, Master Ford, this wrongs you. Master Ford, you must pay and not follow the imaginations of your own heart. Tis jealousies. Well, he's not here I seek for. No, nor nowhere else but in your brain. Oh, help to search my house just one more time. If I find not what I seek, show no color for my extremity. Let me forever be your table sport. Let them say of me, as jealous as Ford that searched a hollow walnut for his wife's lover. Search with me once more, once more satisfy me. What ho, Mistress Page, come you and the old Woman down, my husband will step into the chamber. Old woman? What old woman's that? Why, it is my maid's aunt, the old woman of Rainford. A witch, a hag, an old cousining hag. Have I not forbid her in my house? Oh, she comes of errands, does she? We are simple men. We do not know what comes to pass under the profession of fortune telling. <laughs> She works by charms, by spells, by the figure, and such hocus pocus as is this, beyond our element, we know nothing. Come down, you hag, you witch, you. Come down, I say. Nay, good sweet husband, good gentleman, good gentleman, let him not strike the old fool. Now, mother Pratt, come, give me your hand. Oh, Pratt, her. What I seek, never trust me when I open again. Let's obey his humor a little further, gentlemen. <laughs> Follow him. Oh, oh. Oh, trust me, he beat him most pitifully. Nay, by the mass that he did not, he beat him most unpitifully, methought. I'll have the cudgel hallowed and hung o'er the altar. It hath done meritorious <laughs> service. <laughs> Shall we, with the warrant of womanhood and the witness of a good conscience, pursue him with any further revenge? The spirit of wantonness is sure scared out of him. If the devil have him not in fee simple, with fine and recovery, he will never, in the way of waste, attempt us again. Shall we tell our husbands how we have served him? <laughs> yes, if it be but to scrape the figures from your husband's brains. If they can find it in their hearts, the poor, unvirtuous, fat knight shall be any further afflicted. We two will still be the ministers. <laughs>
never did look upon it. And did he send you both these letters at an instant? Within a quarter of an hour. I pray you, pardon me. I will never misdoubt you again. I would rather suspect the sun with cold than be with wantonness. Now doth I understand in him that was of late a heretic, as firm as fate. Tis well, tis well, but no more. Be not as extreme in submission as an offense. But let our plot go forward. Let our wives get once again to make us public sport. <laughs> Appoint a meeting with this fat old fellow where we may take him and disgrace him for it. <laughs> there is no better way than that they spoke of. How? To send him word they'll meet him at the park in midnight? My files will never work. You say he has been grievously beaten as an old woman and thrown in the rivers? Methinks he shouldn't come. That there should be terrors in him, he shall have no desires. <laughs> That's what I think I too. Devise but how you'll use him when he comes, and let us two devise to bring him thither. There is an old tale goes that Karen the hunter, sometimes a keeper he in Windsor Forest, doth all the winter time at still midnight walk round the thousand oak with great ragged horns. You have heard of such a spirit, and well you know the superstitious idle headed elder who received. Well, they want not many that to fear in deep of night to walk by this turn's oak. But what of this? Mary, <laughs> this is our device. That Falstaff at that oak shall meet with us, disguised as a fern, with huge horns <laughs> on his head. Well, let it not be doubted, <laughs> but he'll come. <laughs> and in this shape, when you have brought him thither, what shall be done with him? What is your plot? That likewise we have thought upon, and thus. Now take my daughter and my little son, and three or four more of their group will dress like urchins, elves, and fairies. Upon a sudden, as false as she and I are newly met, let them from forth a soft hit rush at once and pinch the unclean knight. Until he tell the truth, that the supposed fairies pinch him sound and burn him with their tape. The truth being known, we'll all present ourselves just poor in the spirit and mock him home to Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> but the children must be practiced well to this, or they're ne'er doing. I will teach the children their behaviors, and I will dress like a jackanape also <laughs> to burn the night with my tape and <laughs> That will be excellent. I will go by the masks. My nan shall be the queen of all the fairies, finely tied in a robe of white. That joke will I go by. And in that time, Slender will steal my nan away. Marry her at Eden. Wow. Go send to Falstaff Street. Oh, nay, I'll to him again in name of a brook. He'll tell me all his purpose. Sure, he'll come. Fear not you that. Go and get us properties and trickings for our fairies. Let us about it in very admirable pleasures and very <laughs> honest neighbories. <laughs> Send quickly to Mr. Master Falstaff to know his mind. I'll to the doctor. He and none but he hath my good will to marry Nan Page. That slender, though well landed, is an idiot, and he my husband best of all effects. The doctor is well moneyed and his friends potent at court. He and none but he will have her, though 20,000 worthier come to crave her. John Falstaff from my master, Master Slender. <laughs> There's his house, his chamber, his castle, his standing bed and shuffle bed, tis painted about with the story of the prodigal, fresh and new. Go knock and call, he'll speak like a man's Virginian unto thee. Knock, I say. There's an 
old woman, a fat woman, gone up into his chamber, I'll be so bold as to stay mistress until she come down. I come to speak with her indeed. A fat woman? The knight may be robbed. I'll call. Fully nigh. Fully Sir John. Speak from thy lungs, military. It is thine hostess, thine opinion calls. How oh, now, my hostess? Here's a bohemian carrier coming carries the coming down of thy fat woman. Let her descend, bully. Let her descend. My chambers are honorable. Fie, privacy. Fie. There was mine hostess, even now an old fat woman with me, but she's gone. Uh, pray you, sir, was it not the wise woman of brain first? I marry was a muscle cell. Why would you with her? Uh, my master, sir, my master slender, sent to her upon seeing her go through the streets to know, sir, whether one name had beguiled him of the chain or no. I spake with the old woman about it. And what says she, I pray? Mary, sir, she says that the very same man who beguiled Master Slender of his chain, beguiled him of it. I, I would I could have spoken with the old woman herself. I had other things to have spoken with her about. Uh, what are they? Let us know. I come quick. I may not conceal them, sir. Conceal them, or thou diest. They were nothing but about Mistress Anne Page to know if it were my master's fortune to have her or no. Tis, tis his fortune. Uh, what's that? To have her or no. <laughs> Go, say the woman told me so. Uh, may I be so bold to say so, sir? I, sir, like who more bold? I thank you, worship. I shall make my master glad with these tidings. Thou art clerkly, thou art clerkly, Sir John. Was there a wise woman with thee? I, Mary, was there, and one that hath taught me more wit than ever I learned before in my life. And I paid nothing for it neither, but rather was paid for my learning. <laughs> now, whence come <laughs> you? <laughs> From the two parts. Ah, uh, the devil take one party and is damn the other, and so they shall be both bestowed. I have suffered more for their sakes than the villainous inconstancy of man's disposition is able to bear. And have not they suffered? Yes, I warrant, speciously one of them. Mistress Ford is beaten, black and blue, that you cannot see a white spot about. What tellest thou me of black and blue? I was beaten into all the colors of the rainbow, and was like to be apprehended for the witch of Brainford, but that my admirable dexterity of wit, my counterfeiting the action of an old woman, the knave constable had set me in the stocks in the common stocks for a witch. Sir, <laughs> let me speak to you in your chamber. <laughs> you shall hear how things go, and I warrant to your liking. Oh, here is a letter which will say somewhat. <laughs> Good heart, what a do is here to bring you together. Sure, one of you does not serve heaven well that you are so cross. Come up into my chamber. <laughs> Talk <laughs> not to me, Master Spencer. My mind is heavy. I will give the world. Yet hear me speak. Assist me in my purpose, and as I am a gentleman, I'll give thee a hundred pound in gold more than your loss. I will hear thee, Master Spencer, and I will at least keep your counsel. From time to time, I've acquainted you with the dear love I bear to Fair and Page, who mutually has answered my affection so far forth as herself might be the truth, even to my wish. I have a letter from her of such content as you will wonder at, the mark whereof so larded in my matter that neither seemly can be manifested without the show of both. Wherein fat Falstaff hath a great seen, the image of the jest I'll show you here at large. Hark, good mine hostess, tonight at Hearn's Oak, just with twelve and one, must my sweet Nan present to the fairy queen. The purpose why is here, in which disguise, while other jests are something rank on foot, her father hath commanded her to slip away with slender. And with him at Eton immediately to marry. She hath consented. 
Now, mistress, her mother, even strong against that match and firm for Dr. Gaius, hath appointed that he shall likewise shuffle her away, and at the denary where a priest attends, straight marry her. Now thus it rests. Her father means she shall be all in white, and in that habit, when slender sees it time to take her by the hand and bid her go, she shall go with it. Her mother hath intended, the better to denote her the doctor, for they must all be masked and visited, that quaint in green she shall be loose and robed, with ribbons pendant flaring about her head, and when the doctor spies his vantage right to pinch her by the hand, and on that token, she shall go with him. Which means she to deceive, father or mother? Both, my good hostess, to go along with me. Now thus it rests. You will procure the vicar to stay for me at church twixt twelve and one. And in the lawful name of marrying, give our hearts united ceremony. Well, husband, your device. I'll to the vicar. Bring you the maid. You shall not lack a priest. So shall I evermore be bound to thee. Besides, I'll give thee present recompense. Pretty. What? Pretty. 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 Peace. Pretty. 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 No. More. Prattling. This is the third time. I hope good luck lies in odd numbers. Away, I say! They say there is divinity in odd numbers, either in nativity, chance, or death. Away, I say! I'll provide you a chain, and I'll do what I can to get you a pair of horns. Away, I say, time wears. Hold up your head and mince. How now, Master Brooke, Master Brooke, the matter will be known tonight or never be you in the park about midnight at Hearn's Oak, and you shall see wonders. Uh, went you not to her yesterday, sir, as you told me you had appointed? I went to her, Master Brooke, as you see, like a poor old man, but I came from her, Master Brooke, like a poor old woman. I will tell you that same knave forward her husband hath the finest mad devil of jealousy in him that ever governed frenzy. I knew not what was to be beaten till lately, for I will tell you he beat me grievously in the shape of woman. For in the shape of man, Master Brooke, I fear not Goliath with a weaver's beam, for I know also life is a shuttle. Come, I'm in haste. I'll tell you strange things of this knave Ford on whom tonight I will be revenged. whose wife I will deliver into your hand. Follow. Strange things at hand, Master Brooke. Follow. Remember, son Slender, my daughter. I pursued, I have spoke with her, and we have a nay word how to know one another. I will go to her in white, and I will cry, budget, and she will cry, mum, and I will know her. But what needs either your mum or her budget? The white will decipher you well enough. The night is dark. Light and spirits will be coming soon. No man means evil but the devil, and we shall know him by his horn. Let's away, follow me. Dr. Caius, my daughter is in green. When you see your time, take her by the hand, away with her to the deanery, and dispatch it quickly. Go before her to the park. We two must go together. I know what I have to do. Oh. Adieu. My husband will not rejoice so much at the abuse of false death as he will chafe at the doctor's marrying my daughter, but tis no matter better a little chiding than a great deal of heartbreak. And where is Nan now, and her troop of fairies, and the Welsh devil here? They are all crouched in a pit hard by her and with obscured lights, which at the very instant of false death in our meeting they will once display to the night. That cannot choose but amaze If him. he be amazed, he will be mocked. If he be not amazed, he will every way be mocked. We'll betray him fine. Against such lewdsters and their lechery, those that betray them do no treachery. The hour draws on to the oak, to the oak. The winds of bell hath struck twelve. <laughs> the minute draws on. Now the hot blood of gods assist me. Remember, Jove. Thou wast a bull for thy Europa, love set on thy horns. 
Oh, powerful love that in some respects makes a beast a man, in some other a man. A beast. Oh, omnipotent love, how near the God drew to the complexion of a goose. A fault on first in the form of a beast, oh, Job. A beastly fault, and then again in the semblance of a fowl. Think on it, Job. A fowl fault. When gods have hot backs, what shall poor men do? I am here a Windsor stag, and the fattest I think in the forest. Send me a cool rut time, Job, or who can blame me to pierce my tallow? <gasps> who comes here? My doe? Sir John, art thou there, my dear, my male dear? My doe with the black scud? Oh. Let the sky rain potatoes, let it thunder to the tune of green sleeves. Hail kissing comfits, and snow and goes, let there come a tempest of provocation. I will shelter me here. Oh, Mrs. Page, have come with me, sweetheart. Divide me like a brag, but each a haunch. I will keep my sides to myself, my shoulders to the fellow of this walk, and my horns. I bequeath your husbands. Am I a woodman? Ha. Huh? Speak I like her in the hunter? Why now, Cupid is a child of conscience. He makes restitution. As I am a true spirit, welcome. Alas, what no heaven forgive us sin? What should this be? Away, away! I think the devil will not have me damned, lest that the oil that's in me should set hell on fire. You would never else have crossed me thus. Pray you lock hands in hand, yourselves in order set. And twenty glowworms shall our lantern be to guide our measure round about the tree. But wait. I smell a man from little eyes. Heavens defend me from the wealth fairy, lest he transform me to a piece of cheese. Vile worm, what thou overlook uh, even in thy birth. Uh, With trial fire, touch me his finger end. If he be chaste, the flame will back descend and turn him to no pain. But if he uh, starts, it is the flesh of a corrupted heart. A trial, come. Come, will this war take fire? Oh, oh. Corrupt, corrupt, and tainted in desire. About him, fairies, sing a scornful oh. rhyme. And as you trip, still pinch him to your time. Oh. Pinch him, pinch him, pinch him, pinch him for his villainy. Pinch him and burn him and turn him about to a candle and starlight and moon. I think we have watched you now. <laughs> Will none but her and the hunter serve your turn? Uh, Hold the jest up no further. Now, Sir John, how like you these Windsor wives? Uh, these husbands, do not these yokes become the forest better than the town? Oh, now, sir, who is a cuckold oh. now? Oh. Oh, Master Brook, the <laughs> Falstaff is a knave, a, a cuckoldy knave. Uh, oh, here are his horns, Master Brook. Uh, and Master Brook, he hath enjoyed nothing of Ford's but his buck baskets, uh, and his cudgel, uh, and 20 pounds of money, which uh, must be paid to Master Brook. His horses are arrested uh, for it, Master Brook. Sir John, we have had ill luck. We could never meet. I will never take you for my love again. But. I will always count on you, my dear. <laughs> I do begin to perceive that I am made an ass. I and an ox, too. Both the proofs are extant. And these were not fairies. I was three or four times in the thought they were not fairies. And yet, the guiltiness of my mind, the sudden surprise of my powers, drove the grossness of the foppery into a received belief that despite 
All the teeth of rhyme and reason that there were not fairies. <laughs> See now how wit may be made a jack o' lantern when 'tis upon ill employment. <laughs> Sir John, fairies go, and fairies will not go. Pinch you. <laughs> <laughs> well said, fairy you. <laughs> and leave you your jealousies too. I pray you. <laughs> I will never miss out my wife again. Till thou art able to woo her in good English. <laughs> Have I laid my brain in the sun and dried it? Did it once matter to prevent so gross an o'erreaching as this? Am I ridden with a Welsh goat too? Shall I have a coxcomb a freeze? Tis time I were choked with a piece of posted cheese. Yes. Cheese is not good to give butter your belly. Oh, butter. <laughs> cheese and putter. Mm. Have I lived to stand at the taunt that of one that makes fritters of English? This is enough to be the decay of lust and late walking through the realm. What, Sir John, did you think, though we would have thrust virtue out of our hearts by the head and shoulders, and given ourselves without scruple to hell, that ever the devil could have made you our delight. Oh, what? A hodge pudding? A bag of flax? A puffed man. Old, cold, withered, and of intolerable oh, entrails. Oh, and one that is as slanderous as Satan. And as poor as Job. And as wicked as his wife. And given to fornications. And to sack and to drinkings and methiglins and drinkings and stirrings and swearings and pribbles and prabble. Well, I am your theme. You have the start of me. I am dejected. Ignorance itself is a plummet o'er me. I cannot answer the Welsh flannel. <laughs> Use me as you will. Oh, <laughs> marry, sir. We'll bring you home to Windsor to one a Master Brook, uh, uh, and whom you have cousined of money, and to whom you should have been a pander. Over and above that which you have suffered, I think, to repay that money will be a biting affliction. Uh, Yet be careful, knight. <laughs> Thou shalt eat a potter tonight at my house, <laughs> where I will desire thee to laugh at my wife, who now laughs at thee. Tell her. Slender hath married her daughter. Doctor, just doubt that. If Nan Page be my daughter, she is Slender. by this time Dr. Caius's wife. Ah! 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 Wow! <laughs> Father. Have you dispatched? Dispatch! A girl. And fudge it. On no. Amen! <laughs> On best son! Amen! By God, he's not in bed. Oh, I am gossip. Why did you not take her in grief? I, by God, and he's a man. <laughs> by God, I'll raise all winter. This is strange. Who hath got the right and <laughs> my heart? Excuse me. How now? Thank you.
some have attained a thousand, even to the tenth power of Satan. For it's not a matter of meat and drink, but it's God of power, love, and sound mind. Friends, do not be weary. Fear is no danger. When you rise, the heavens are shut, and the stars are falling. And when the money is bad, the law is weak. And the bad friends go about their way. I am glad that you paid as much respect by giving me that your arrow hath lacked. Well, my friend of youth and age, fencing. Heaven give thee joy, but cannot be restored, but give me grace. 